<laughs> All right, let's go. Um, cool. So uh, about me, uh, my name is Lucas. I am a client platform engineer here in Bellingham. Um, I manage a fleet of Mac systems, Mac OS systems uh, our clients use. Um, here in Bellingham, uh, we have a remote office in uh, Henderson, Nevada, outside of Las Vegas, and we have a remote office in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I'm originally from Dayton, Ohio. I relocated out uh, for this position uh, about three or so years ago. So, uh, not much in Dayton if you ever get a chance to stop. Uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at the Lucanator. Uh, LucasJHall.com is my blog. Um, I'm going to have uh, most of this stuff up on the blog. Um, I have a pending request to just post my uh, documentation to get. Get uh, because to GitHub, be, but because of my organization, we are financial. We're a financial institution, and I have to get certain permission to interact with the public in any way. So it's a little cumbersome, to say the least. So um, I just want to make sure everything's good. So uh, the context of this talk um, is pretty uh, OS agnostic. Um, so my context specifically is we have uh, Mac OS clients um, and then virtual. Windows clients, um, and then we also have um, most of our servers are Ubuntu based, so dev based. Um, <laughs> Mac OS servers, in air quotes, for those of you listening, as much as you can have a Mac OS server, and then Windows servers uh, as well. Uh, when we choose applications internally, we try to keep it as open source as possible. Um, just because of the visibility that we gain through the tools um, and the community rapid response um, for when there's issues. Uh, so, yeah. So, some of the goals uh, that I set out um, that kind of led to this talk were uh, some way to have fleet visibility, um, client server, um, the ability to audit config changes, um, and then to be able to query a system or a series of systems or a fleet of machines ad hoc. Um, and then I would also like to reuse as much infrastructure as possible. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about a couple different tools, um, but I'd say two-thirds of the tools that I mentioned could probably, or one-third of them could be whatever you want. Um, it's just what I use because it's what I had been used to, so you know, it's totally kind of a preference thing, and I'll talk about that more as we go. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick overview of this, like, fleet visibility stack, I guess. Um, go through, hopefully, a quick start guide slash demo with some examples. We'll see how that goes. Uh, and then I'll have some time for Q&A at the end. Um, so this example stack that I'm talking about, um, who here has heard of OS Query? Who here uses it locally, OS Query I? Or OS Query D, do you distribute it in any way? Cool. So this is what's really neat is, OS Query, I'm going to talk about that as a tool um, to gain information about a system. Uh, Fleet is a broker for queries, I guess. Um, it gives you the ability to schedule and query a system, subset, subset of systems um, about certain particular uh, pieces of information. And then Graylog is an auto, is a, it's a logging system, so if you have an ELK stack, um, it's, it is an ELK stack, it's just kind of rebranded. Um, but if you use, you know, any, you know, any of those, uh, it's just a different brand. I just use it because I like it because I can grab an ISO and go kind of thing. Um, and, yeah. Again, that's preference. You could use whatever logging system you have. If you, have, if you are fortunate and have deep enough pockets for Splunk, you can use that. If you, you know, Kibana, you know, whatever. So, I already talked about OS Query for those of you who don't know what it is. Um, it's a really neat system. Um, it, it, it basically will take, it'll take your, your machine endpoint, whether it's a Mac, Linux, Windows, doesn't matter, um, and it'll turn it into a kind of queryable database in memory. So you'll be able to query your machine for specific, specific sets of information um, from a command line tool. Um, so uh, those two, uh, yeah, here you go. So a little bit about OS Query. Um, it's, okay, so it's open source. Uh, it's been open source, I think, yeah, two, 2014. Uh, Mac OS, NOS, FreeBSD, uh, free uh, Linux, um, 
it can all run on that. Uh, it's built by Facebook. So this came out of Facebook engineering's team. So in light of everything that's happened, imagine them also having a tool that can pretty much give you any information about a host system as well. So it's a really neat tool. Um, it's incredibly powerful. Um, and I feel like it's just now starting to kind of get other tools around it to help it really be deployed uh, in mass. Um, it can be as simple as uh, getting a dpackage or a package, or you can get the app to Yum repository or whatever um, you need. So there's two, there's two different tools in OS Query. So there's OS Query I, which you'll see a little bit of here, um, which is the command line interface for if you want to just install it on a client, have it on your client, and just run queries against your machine. Um, that's OS Query I. And then OS Query D is the daemon tool uh, that you can use to schedule queries or have it do things periodically or interact with a remote server. So uh, here's a really quick example of OS Query I uh, right from the shell. Um, sorry, it's kind of small. Uh, you can just get into it. Um, it's Again, it's all SQL-based, which I'm a human Mac admin, and I don't do database stuff, so it took a little bit of a learning curve for me, just to be honest, but um, there's a lot of help modes, and then it's as simple as simple. It you know, took me a little while to get the hang of it, but if you just want to query, for example, um, your etc host file. So select star from etc hosts. Tell me what's there. There you go. So it displays like that in database table. So that's my ethos file on this machine that I just ran it. Um, so to demo what would happen is if we changed it. So what I'll do is I will pre-recordedly uh, nano into my ethos host file, and then again nano because I'm, I'm Mac admin. I don't. I'm not cool enough for admin or anything. So. Um, yeah, so I'll go in and then I'll uh, throw in a, a change, for example. So uh, let's just change, uh, let's just do 8.8.8 .8 .8 and uh, we'll just have that result to whatever. So we'll save that. Oh, I skipped it. So then what we'll do is we'll go back in and query it. After we've changed it, we'll go back in and We'll go back into OS query and then we'll query it. Same thing again, select star from ETC hosts. You get the idea. Um, and then you will see that row added to that table um, when the query returns. So, um, really, really high level um, change in it. But you can start to see, once you know the schemas, how powerful this tool could be. Um, so, the schemas are available on osquery.io's website. Um, it's OS query D and I. Um, select only. Everything's in SQL, but select only. So insert, update, delete. They're not going to work. It's literally just a read only uh, database of all of these schemas. And you can start looking through um, all of the 194 uh, different tables in the schema um, on their website, specified by version. So if a certain version is not supported with that distro yet, whatever, but they're really, really good about every release works with all of the supported distros. It's just the specific tables that may not work. So OS Query Info will return information about OS Query itself, so what's installed on your machine. And then each one of these will tell you what um, system it's compatible with. So Mac, Linux, um, OpenBSD, Windows. Um, yeah. Uh, and then there is another thing on top of that that you once you have a query, um, you can get what's called a query pack. Um, and these packs are just what they sound like. They're a huge list of queries. So if you look, it's just JSON. Um, here's the top one, and it says, select star from OS query info. And then it says, interval, how often do you want to do it? Your version of your OS query. And then a description if you want to keep it. I'm going to touch on uh, packs a little bit more later. Um, but it's just compounding on the idea of multiple queries. Um, OS Query Resources, they have a really, really nice read the docs um, site set up. There's tons of stuff on their GitHub uh, as well. Uh, and they also have a Slack channel that you can join um, that I clearly I'm not logged into at the moment, but I know I have it over here somewhere. Uh, so I don't know if anybody uses Slack for anything. If there's any Mac admins out there, there's a really, really great Mac admins Slack uh, that you should hop on. Um, but there's also this OS Query 
uh, Slack channel um, with loads of stuff. Um, tons of the guys that make it sit in here. And then Collide, which is the company about the next tool that I'm going to talk about, have their own channel in here. And then there's also distro-based channels. So if you have a question that's specific to deploying on Red Hat or something, it's all going to be in here. So, yeah, Slack. I came in after the IRC days, so is I'm not going to... Is the database embedded in the product to, to let you... The database sits in memory on your system. So, oh. so any of the information that's collected from your system sits in a on, uh, in memory database on your system. So when you run the queries, it locally stores that on a database. You're, and really, though, your system is the database. It's just returning information about your system that looks like a database. Um, and that's, what, that's where Fleet comes in, is Fleet gives you the opportunity to customize and schedule those kind of checks. Um, so Collide is the company. Uh, they recently, I mean, I think within like the last two weeks, uh, finally released their public uh, software as a service. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, I don't use it. I can't vouch for it. I know a lot of the guys that are in the development of it, and they're really cool, really cool dudes doing some cool stuff. Um, but that's really all I'm going to say about that. Um, they have an open source tool on their GitHub called Fleet, and that's what I will be talking about today. And then this is basically an on-prem solution for um, writing queries and deploying them on the fly. Also, it gives you the ability to schedule queries on your systems. Um, so, and this is all done. Uh, it's all written in Go, so there's a little, they have a little Go-branded uh, <laughs> Go for, for their Collide and a little wizard guy. Um, and I have a sticker of, a stack of stickers up, up here as well, if you are interested at the end. Um, so installing Fleet, they made it really easy. There's a quick start script that hopefully I'm going to demo for you today. Um, Docker image, which is their best supported um, way to deploy it, uh, but there's also other ways. Um, if you want to run a binary, you can because um, some people just like to have it installed via app on their system. So it's, you know, preference. Um, so once it's installed, it's just really, as of now, it's a pretty simple web interface. Um, it will tell you you don't have any hosts installed. Um, it'll give you a host overview page. Um, you can create and save queries. Um, query packs, which I talked about. Um, there's a note on that, which I'll mention later. Um, query decorators, um, as with logging, query decorators um, are specific roles you can set to make um, specific return values prettier, I guess, decorated. Um, so it's a little bit more human readable. And those, uh, I won't get too much into that. Um, and then there's specific settings. Um, all of the interaction between OS Query D on the client and uh, Fleet is done over TLS uh, and will require a cert and things to set up, which we'll get into next. So, um, yeah. You can set it up specific to your company. They offer a little bit of branding. Um, yeah. So enrolling a client into Fleet once you have it set up. Uh, again, all the communication is done over TLS. So um, you will need the, cert the certificate of the Collide server as well as an enrollment secret, which can be regenerated on the fly. So if you want it, if your cert doesn't expire for so long, you can regenerate the key uh, the secret as much as you want uh, in the interim for redeployment if necessary. Um, and then coming soon, Fleet is going to support, uh, it already supports packs, but it doesn't import the, it doesn't support the import of a pre-existing pack off the top of my head. Um, so you would have to recreate a pack inside of Fleet. Um, so that's coming soon, and that, from what I'm told, in like the near, the near future. Uh, and they're also going to integrate version control. So like being able to track what queries you're doing uh, in query packs within Git, um, which will be awesome for those of you who live that life. Um, so let's just do a demo, because I think showing it is easier. Um, so uh, I'm going to go over here. Uh, so I, this is hopefully what I'll be able to post later. Um, on their website, they have uh, really simple instructions. You can clone this collide, collide slash collide quick start. Um, and it's as simple as you need Docker installed for this. And it'll install the uh, server and some Docker containers. So what I'll do here is I, I should have it running Docker PS. So let's see what's going on. So you can see that the Collide Fleet server itself is running. It's also running a MySQL my database. 
it's running Redis, and it's running Mailhog, which, you know, that's just kind of what comes with the demo. Again, uh, choose your own adventure. Uh, so basically, MySQL is the database that handles the storage of the information received from the clients. Redis is what handles the incoming messages to then send off to MySQL. Um, so this has been up for 25 minutes now, so let's see if it works. So all I did before y'all came in uh, was uh, this, <laughs> it was just demo dot slash demo up, and then it pulled the containers, refreshed them, and then brought them, so. All right, so localhost over SSL. I already accepted the bad cert, self, it's self-signed cert uh, for the demo. So I already accepted that, and then I got to this page. So we'll just go through demo, 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 demo. I don't know if it'll let me do that, but. Oh, come on, real password requirement? Jeez. Oh, so just a new password. Demo, let's just. Lucas.j.hall plus demo. Pro tip, if you need multiple email addresses and Gmail, just add a plus to the end of your normal one and it'll give you a sub, sub email address. Um, demo, demo. Uh, I guess I don't need to do that. Submit. Localhost 84.12, finish. Cool. So after I started it up, um, that's all there was to really get it rolling. Um, I will say that if you set it up in a binary, off a binary, or some other way, you will need to get a cert generated and do a lot of that stuff because it does require a valid cert um, uh, on the client of the host web server. So let's, cool. So we have it here. Um, so let's walk through the process um, of just getting a client enrolled. So uh, if I go to this add new host, it gives me that screen which I showed before. This is kind of one of my, one of my, you know, biggest complaints about an open source source tool that I spent zero time on developing. So um, I don't have a quick way to get this rolling. So if I go over to that repository that I cloned, um, that's not it. This is it. Um, I can look inside of it and I can see that demo dot, dot slash demo sh. Uh, they built in a Mac OS, I know this is a Linux fest, I, I know, but just bear with me here for a sec for sake of illustration. Uh, they built in the ability to create a Mac OS installer package on the fly. Um, fat fingers, no, uh, what happened? Let's make sure I'm calling it correctly. Enroll Mac. Now, read the manual. All right. So that'll go out and make sure we're on latest and then create an installer package. Um, sweet. So let's go into app. Did it give me an out? Yeah, sweet. So. Sweet, there it is. So let's open that and take a look at it. Um, so this this is a macOS package, but the logic stands for any any client, regardless of the these are the needed these are the needed pieces to make this work. Um, so we're just going to look at all the files that are included in this package. So uh, a launch daemon to create um, this is to create the uh, process to kick off the OS query D. Um, the collide secret, which is the same secret we saw in the web server right here. So if we reveal that secret, that's that secret. And then um, collide cert. So what it did was it just went out and grabbed the, the self-signed cert that we generated when we started up the demo. And then it also pre-filled this collide flags. Um, so basically this collide.flags is a text file of flags for OS query to use, uh, OS query D to use when it launches. Um, so at this point, we're creating a package to configure OS query D on the client. So I also have these over here in a way that we can take a look at them that's a little bit easier. So that secret file is literally nothing but that secret that we saw on the web page. Um, collide OS query enroll, uh, that's the plist. Um, so this is the launch agent, sorry, launch daemon for the Mac, um, which will just launch user local bin OS query D with the flag file. 
is all it does, and it points it over to that flag file that I mentioned. And then from here is how you configure OS query D to know where to look. So if you look, it's enrollment endpoint is the API v1 for the server that we're spinning up. So the host name is Collide 8412 um, and stuff like that. So if I hop over to a virtual machine, not that one, but this one, wakey, wakey, um, we can see that, um, let's see, did I already install OS? So OS query is a prerequisite for this, and it has to be installed first, and I do not have it installed yet. So we'll make this a true demo. Um, so we'll just go ahead and install this package. I got it just right off of the Facebook uh, Facebook repo, osquery.io. So that's installed. So now, sweet. So if I do osquery i, I'm back into that shell uh, that we had seen before. So um, sweet. So now let's get that package um, that we got that we generated. So here we go. Where did we put it? There it is. Cool. So where did I quick share folder demo? Okay, so we're just gonna pop that into this demo folder. It's not there. Now it's there. Magic. Cool. So we're all, so now we'll install this package that we just generated on here. All right. Fun times. Cool. All right, so now if we do ls on var log os query, we can see uh, an, an error log and an output log. So the OS query error log is where obviously any errors are gonna go, but the output log is where any of the queries that we've told it to check will put its information into. So when the fleet server queries the A client, Mac or Linux, it's going to put its output into that log file, which will then get grabbed by the um, fleet server. So if we go back over here to our fleet server, it's still lonely. Oh no. Okay, so let's see what happened. So if we go in here and we do a, uh, let's do this, tail f on var log os query, os query error. Heyo! What happened? TLS HTTPS post request to collide failed. Okay, so let's take a look here. Let's cats etc hosts since I'm running this. So it looks like collide is in there. Let's make sure that's correct. It said no node key. No node key, is that what it said? No node key returned from TLS enrollment, retrying. So let's do this real quick. I wanna make sure, since I'm running this on it, I wanna make sure these VMs are on the proper sub networks. VMnet2, okay, so that's right. Uh, if config web. that looks like it's the right one. So, shortest demo ever. Collide. One nine two six six four eight one. Okay, so I have no idea why this isn't working now. Um, so if we go back over here, I guess what we can do is we can go. Interesting. HTTPS post request API was query config. So let's do this. Uh, let's tail the out real quick. If if anything, I'll just hop over to the node key. Yeah, totally missing node key. 
Are we missing a no key? We auto generated it. Okay, well, moving on. Let's try it on. Let's try it on on Ubuntu and see what happens. Um, so we know the parts, so we'll just do it manually. Uh, okay, so I got 18.04 VM here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a host, and this time we're just going to we're going to do it manually. Um, I think I already have OS Query installed on this box. Um, I just did it via the apt repository. Um, so you know, again, your mileage may vary. Um, so CD into Ubuntu installer. So what I did is I took those pieces and I made um, made a little folder for them. But because this demo isn't going as I thought it would, we're just going to do this and we're going to start over. So this will be a great demo because now we know the pieces. So we have this collide secret um, and we have the certificate, which is great. But the part that you really care about when you're configuring your clients is the flag file. So let's take a look at this flag file. Um, so, you know, host identifier is going to be your client. Um, the TLS host name is Collide8412. So let's just make sure, first thing, first thing first, that. Cool. So, so then. Let's just make sure we actually access it. If we ping it, we should be good though. Collide 8412 over. We gotta go over HTTPS. Okay, sweet. So obviously that's fine, but we're we're good. So it can hit it. So let's see if we can finish the setup process. Um, so we're gonna take this collide flags and I'm going to create a little uh, Ubuntu installer folder inside my downloads for illustration. Um, so there's the collide flags. I had pre-copied this in. So but what we're going to do is we're going to recreate the files that we need. Thanks y'all for being patient on this. For all demos it was working last night so we're gonna go to downloads and then um, we're gonna we're gonna add them that Ubuntu installer folder so we can just work right in there hey -o. okay cool so we're gonna do a new file and then so collide flags calls for uh, collide cert and collide secret so let's go ahead and just make a file called Collide Secret. So we're going to go File, uh, go to New File, Collide Secret. Okay, so what's the secret? Where did we find that? We found that in the web page. So on the host, we'll just copy the secret, put that in there, save it. Cool. So what else do we need? We need the the cert. So I'll click that. It's just going to chuck it into the downloads, and then I'll just relocate that really quick over to Ubuntu Installer. But, but, it looks like the collide flag wants it to be called collide.cert. So we'll just rename that. Pem file. So that matches. Okay, cool. So these are the three main parts that we need aside from the pre-existing OS query daemon. Um, so what I also did too is I made a um, couple uh, bash, bash scripts um, just to make it easier for the demo, which seems to be going really well right now. So, um, but basically what it'll do is um, this install script would like go out, add your key in, pull it from the Ubuntu repository. And then the part that we really care about right now is moving these pieces over into the specific locations. Um, and then I have this run OS query uh, flag. So where the Mac installer has a built-in daemon, um, the Ubuntu and Linux installers, you'll probably have to make like a system D entry or something to launch this tool to your specifications. Um, they have a built-in uh, built uh, binary tool coming soon, but um, it's, it's not um, packageable at the moment, so. Um, so what we're going to do is once we have everything in here that we need, I'm just going to scp.history. 
going to SC history. Oh, nice. Right, right. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm just going to SCP that over. <laughs> Surprised I did that the first time. Okay. So, we have all of these pieces. So, we need to move them into ETC OS query. So, if we look in there real quick, list ETC OS query, we'll see some stuff. Um, well, we won't see anything because we haven't um, we haven't configured it yet. So what we'll do is we'll just move the collide dot dot yep. How about the collide everything into etc os query? Let's see, OS query. Cool. So certs there, flags there, secrets there. So now what we need to do is we need to launch, we need to run OS query D and we need to point it to that flag file because that flag file contains the information and all the stuff that we need to do. So if we do OS query D flag file equals, and that is in where we just put it, etc OS query, etc OS query and collide dot flags. Cool. So we'll just do this. Okay, so it's off and running. So um, let's see what happened. I'm going to love it if the Linux host did it out the box. <laughs> yeah, all right. So boom, there it is. So serves me right for trying to demo Mac OS at a Linux conference. Cool. So, um, so now our server is aware of this client. So it's an Ubuntu 18.4.0, 18 it's running OS Query version 2.11, it's got two gigs of RAM, it's got dual cores, but not for two hours. Here's, here's its IP address, here's its MAC address. Okay, cool. Um, so now I'm back on my host, I'm not on the VM. Uh, what I can do is I can go into Query and then I can start building things out that we had talked about. So we'll just call this an example query. And then everybody loves the ETC host, but let's do something different. So um, they actually allow you to look inside the tables right here, built into the web, web interface. So like you can get documentation right in here and you don't have to flip back and forth. So um, I mean, poof, you, 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 know, you name it, it's probably in here as far as system level stuff goes. Um, so we can do, uh, I think there's one, I think there's even an apt one since we're on Ubuntu, apt sources. So select star from apt, and it's going to pop up here. So apt sources, so example. So then we can select um, where to run it. So we only have one host because my demo is awesome, um, and that's an Ubuntu host. But you can see here that it you can actually send queries out to all your hosts at the same time. So if you have a set of things that should be the same on all of your machines in your institution, whether it's Mac, Windows, Linux, DNS resolvers, hosts, files, if they're ever touched, things like that. You can just make sure all of that stuff stays the same. Um, so I'm just going to click a little add button here. I'm just going to send it to all hosts because we only, we only have one. And I'm going to click run. So we're going to scroll down and then we'll see it. It's going to send that out. If we scroll over, you can see it reporting. It'll run through and say, okay, here's all the stuff um, that I'm report <laughs> reporting back over to the server. Um, and then over here, no results found. App sources. Start from app sources. Do we not have any app sources on that? Boo! Terrible demo. Let's just specify this guy. Cool. So here, I just ran etc hosts for an example, and then it returned uh, the columns and the items here. Um, I'm going to do it again really quick. I'm just curious about that apt. Apt, apt sources. Let's say a captive audience. 
why that wouldn't have worked. Hmm. Couldn't be anything that I'm running 1804 or anything like that. Yeah, you're right. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. I'm going to open up a new one. So we're going to try to run it locally. So let's do OS Query I. This will get us into, um, you can see both are running at the same time. So you can use OS Query I on the fly. Uh, so let's do select star from apt sources. Does that look right? Hey oh, what did I do wrong? Don't know what I did wrong. So there's all the app sources. Um, and then you can divide it up from there. So instead of doing star, you could say, you know, uh, do, 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 do name release. And then just get the name and the release. So, but this goes out to like, uh, and you'll see, I'm gonna talk about how, how further out this can I expand. So once you have, once you have whatever, query that you like. So let's just say something that should never change. Probably your ETC host file, unless you have devs. But <laughs> in your normal, you know, in your normal company, probably if you're managing machines, clients shouldn't be changing their ETC host file. Uh, so once you have this, we'll just call it example uh, ETC host. So we'll just, let's save this. We're just going to save this as a new query. So now this is kind of, now if we go to queries, we have this pre-configured demo uh, example query that we have. So what we can do now is we can go into a pack and create a pack. So let's say that like this is something that we would want all of our hosts. So let's say all hosts. We want all of our hosts to ensure ensure no changes, you know, changes on a particular config. So um, we only have the one host, so we'll do that. And then I'll say save query pack. So now this pack all hosts, which is our one host, is now able to add multiple queries into this pack. So we only have the one query configured, which was example, which happened to be select star from etc hosts. But now we can predetermine how often do we want to check that. So like if you want to check that, you know, every two minutes, and this is applicable to which platform, we'll just say all platforms. Minimum version, um, you can tweak that depending on what you're using and what you need. And then logging is um, a really nice feature. So this is where, um, depending on your use case, uh, you could generate insane amount of logs or logs on changes. Uh, so there's the different logging types, which um, probably the one I don't recommend is Snapshot. Snapshot will, every time this runs, it will report back a snapshot of that config at that time send it to your log server, now you have it. But every 120 seconds, you're gonna see the same ETC host file until it changes. And now you expound on multiple queries out, it's gonna be huge. So um, there's differential plus minus and then differential ignore removals. Um, those two are pretty much the same. It just, one reports all of the changes, adds and subtracts, and the other only reports adds. Um, so something like differential is nice if you want to monitor the state of configuration um, I'm not going to talk about shards. We're going to skip over that for now. Um, monitor the state of configurations for whatever. So every 120 seconds, it's going to check the host and make sure that the ETC host file is reported back. If it changes, then it generates a log. It will not generate a log unless it changes from its current state when this is implemented. So I'm going to keep going here. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. So we did the demo. Um, so... Once Fleet has told a, a host or a series of hosts to run these queries, um, it gets back any changes. So that's kind of up to you how you want to handle that now. So on your host, on your Fleet host, whether it's a Docker container with a mounted volumes repository or it's a CentOS server with a log file, you have to choose what you want to do with that information now. I chose to send it to Graylog because I'm already using Graylog a lot of other stuff, so I just forward that log file onto Graylog. Um, if you use Graylog or haven't used Graylog, um, again, it's an open source logging. They do have an enterprise option that you can pay for, but it's really quick to spin up in a lot of different ways. Um, but in summary, what I just mentioned was we have our 16, 1804 machine uh, running OS Query D with those collide configurations. So what I did, what I like, is I honestly use FileBeat. Even though I don't use 
uh, an elk stack name brand, I still use their file, their um, log exporter. It's an agent that runs on the client. Um, and what you can do is you can configure it to export specific log files. So instead of trying to dump through our syslog or something, um, you can use just a file beat explorer. Um, and then you just specify the two paths that you want to watch. Um, you probably don't even need to do both. You really just need the results. The status log just tells you the status of your OS query uh, agent, so, or daemon, sorry. So this log is what we care about, this OS query results log. And we're going to send that to Graylog. What I like about FileBeat is instead of using something like our syslog, which does it in syslog format, it actually supports GUF. So it can import, uh, the, it can log the JSON directly. So uh, you have this example log. So this is what we did. We changed 8.8.8 to 8, host names, whatever. So that's a log that got generated from OS query when we changed our host file. Um, so what you can do with Graylog that I like is run these extractors, and they have a built-in JSON extractor, and it took zero configuration. I just said anything from this source, use the JSON extractor. So that was the log before. This is the log now. Boom. So now I have all of that same information, nice and pretty inside Graylog, but each of these items are then searchable. So the name of the pack, example check, the source it came from, the file it came from, the host identifier. So in this case, this was from a Mac client that I did a demo of. Um, and then from here, you can set rules. So you're getting all these logs from your clients only on changes, which is really nice. And from there, you can set alerts or archive compliance. The fact that you can archive changes to config files that generate no changes shows you that no config files were changed is awesome, because then I can go to my compliance team and look, say, hey, all of this stuff at the system level has never been touched, because I have no logs of it changing, and I have a log of my agent running properly on those machines. That's pretty darn cool for me in my area, but it may be different for you. This may be overkill. You may not need to keep a whole audit log with all of the system changes. Um, but, again, your mileage may vary on how you want to use it. Um, so the alerting piece is kind of up to you. You can use whatever you have here. It's just a syslog server. It's just Gelf. So, you know, it's whatever you want. So um, there are other ways you can do this kind of stuff. Config management itself, really popular, Chef Puppet. Um, a lot of those, like Chef, I know they have an audit tool available. So if you're already on that path, it might be something that's like, oh, okay, you know, verify that these configs are the way they are. And you know they are because Chef's running that way. And this may not be applicable for you. But it's another option as a secondary tool to monitor these settings. Um, and then this can work hand in hand with a couple other things. Um, like you can do some triggers and stuff uh, based off binaries. I don't know if anybody's looked at Google Santa project. It's whitelisting, blacklisting binaries. This is, again, it's kind of Mac OS specific here. Um, but there's another project out there called Zentral. Um, and it's aiming to do more than what Fleet can do. Uh, however, eh, it's, uh, it's been in progress for a while, and I think it's only on 0.4. So I'm just kind of a little... Um, Skeptical on the prom pretty pretty pictures though, uh, but what I can say is that uh, Fleet, if all you need to do is organize, distribute queries, and get that data back, it's a great tool, and that's at its core what it'll do. Um, if that's what you need, it'll do it. Um, so, again, sorry the, of course the demo didn't go as fluid as I would like, um, but you can, you can kind of see that if you start looking at all of the different queries that are available, um, how you can start building these packs out. And what's nice too is the community has already started building out packs for known vulnerabilities. So if you do, um, you can just Google it, it's the OS query um, packs. Uh, do, 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 do. It's on their GitHub if the internet works. Um, and what it'll do is they'll have known vulnerabilities baked into different uh, different uh, config files that you can use to go in and say like, oh, like I want to check for this specific vulnerability. Um, so uh, because I'm a Mac guy, 
we can look at OSX attacks. So inside here is a whole list of different queries that correspond to known vulnerabilities. <coughs> so if you were able to load up, like, so here, here's the genium, which if you're a Mac admin, you've heard of that. And basically it knows select star from launch D where all of these items, any of these items are included. So when Genio as a as malware is installed on a machine, it generates these files inside of launch D. So it knows, hey, if any of these launch Ds are present, alert. And then you have a, you have a, a stream of available alerts that one of your systems has been compromised based on all of these predetermined. And these are all, again, on on OS on OS Query's uh, GitHub page. Um, so in summary, in summary, uh, Fleet's a really cool tool. Um, I can't vouch for Collide's paid product, and I won't because um, I haven't used it, but I really like Fleet um, as an on-prem solution for being able to both know that configurations are what they say they are um, without using um, something like Chef. It's kind of a standalone tool that you can aggregate an audit log on its own. And hey, this is standalone. It's not responsible for doing anything to the configs. All it does is read them, which is really great from a compliance standpoint to say, hey, look, this tool doesn't touch it, but it verifies that they're correct, um, which is awesome. Um, it's <laughs> contrary to the demo, it's pretty easy to set up um, you just have to make sure you have a cert for it inside your domain. Uh, and they have some really good documentation about it. Uh, yeah, they have a couple other tools. Launcher, which is an open source tool for uh, deploying across uh, cloud platforms and stuff. Uh, you can take a look at that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it has good inner, inner uh, it's written in Go, hence the little gopher wizard. And then Monkey, if you're a Mac admin, Monkey is an open source tool uh, for software management on the Macs. So, yeah, that's um, what I have. I'll stick around a little bit since we have lunch. If you have any questions, feel free to come up and ask me. Apologize for the demo and the highly caffeinated rambling. So thank you.